Hello and welcome back to the Smile and Save podcast brought to you by Serve and Protect Credit Union. My name's Tom and I'll be your host for today's episode. Now we took a short break back in September but we're back for our new financial year with lots of plans for the podcast uh, for the year ahead uh, featuring educational content much like today and also interviews with people in the know. Now today's episode is just a short one on three money habits to try and avoid in order to improve your financial resilience. Now these three habits you might not think link uh, too closely with your ability to borrow money but they very much do and so we're just going to go through how they impact your ability to borrow and some tips to think about when it comes to managing these financial habits. So The first money habit to avoid, uh, we're actually going to talk about, is buy now, pay later. Now, I'm sure you've heard of buy now, pay later. It rose to prominence in the pandemic. It became a really popular way of spreading the cost of buying things online. And it's often interest free in the short term, but interest can be added if it's not repaid within the agreed time frame. And that tends to be a few months, uh, but maybe upwards of a year. Now, buy now, pay later can be useful when it comes to buying essential purchases for things like maybe furniture or white goods, if you can get it on 0% APR. You don't always have the savings to buy these things. So spreading the cost over time can just give you a little bit more flexibility uh, in making those purchases for things that you do really need. But did you know that fees can actually be added if you miss a repayment? So you may think that it's starting off free, but if you don't manage it correctly, you can end up uh, paying a cost for buy now, pay later. Now, buy now, pay later isn't currently regulated in the way that things like uh, credit and other things are financially. So it hasn't been mandatory for missed repayments to actually be reported on your credit report. However, this is starting to change and the government are starting to look into buy now, pay later uh, in terms of regulating it. And so that will mean that if you do miss a repayment on buy now, pay later, then that may start to appear on your credit report. And that can actually impact your ability to borrow money in the future. So if you currently use buy now, pay later, if you're in the habit of using it regularly, um, Fun fact, you can actually buy takeaways now on buy now, pay later. Um, So if that's something that you're doing at the moment, maybe have a look at a budget plan um, and see if you can manage your finances more effectively. But if you are using buy now, pay later, just be aware that missing repayments or not um, paying off the cost within the agreed term can lead to additional charges as well. So it's not always free like it sounds like it is. Another thing to be aware of when it comes to buy now, pay later is something called over committing. And this is where you buy multiple items on buy now, pay later, and you commit to large repayments every single month because you're paying off multiple different things. Now, this is problematic because if your financial situation changed in some way, if you experienced a financial emergency, if you lost your job, if a loved one became ill, whatever it may be, uh, a couple of things could happen. So because you're committed to um, high repayments in terms of buy now, pay later, you may have less disposable income because it's locked away in those repayments. So you might have less cash to be able to deal with whatever financial emergency you're experiencing. Or if you needed to then borrow money, it may be harder to pass affordability assessments when applying for credit because you've got more money going out than you normally would. So when it comes to buy now, pay later, uh, it can be useful, as we say, but before you decide to use it, think about whether you could save for that item instead and think about whether it really is essential. Um, If you're buying things just to spread the cost to make it a little bit easier to buy, think about maybe taking a couple of months to save up, making that purchase, and it's going to feel much more rewarding as well as being a little bit kinder to your finances as well. So moving on to the second money habit that can impact your finances and your ability to borrow, uh, we've actually got frequent gambling. Now, gambling alone won't impact your ability to borrow money as it doesn't impact your credit score directly. It's become a part of society, you know, when it comes to sport, particularly football, horse racing, uh, gambling is, is very popular in these sort of sports. 
but the frequency and the size uh, of your gambling can actually impact your ability to borrow. And that's because lenders, uh, when you apply for credit, lenders will often look into your credit report, but they'll also look at your affordability in terms of your spending habits and whether you can actually afford to pay for the type of credit that you're applying for. Now, gambling will actually show in the affordability report because it's money that you spend every month. And a high frequency or high proportion of your income spent on gambling may make a lender slightly more cautious to lend to you due to the risk of missed repayments. You know, if your gambling spend uh, fluctuates every month, it's a little bit unstable, a lender might be a little bit worried about whether you can actually make the repayments if you've got enough money to, to deal with them. Now, using credit or an overdraft to fund your gambling activity can also make a lender uh, a lot more cautious to lend to you as well. And this actually can have an impact on your credit score over time if you're using credit to fund your gambling and not managing it correctly. So just be aware of that. Now, if you're concerned about how gambling may impact your ability to borrow, consider one of these three things. Firstly, you could try to cut back on how often you gamble. So if you're gambling every few days or every weekend, maybe try and cut that back a little bit. Secondly, you could also try to reduce the amount that you stake every time so that you're spending less in total on your gambling. And if you are and if you are worried about how your gambling makes you feel, uh, consider speaking to a specialist charity such as Gamcare who can provide free and confidential support. Uh, we'll actually put a link in the description for you to head to if, if that's something that you're interested in. So have a look out for that. And the final money habit that we'll be talking about today is spending more than you earn or overspending. And this is often something that is difficult to spot without taking the proper financial steps to look through it. So if you get to uh, payday every month and you find that you've often run out of money or you're waiting for that paycheck to land desperately, it's a sign that you're spending a little bit too much on things that you might not need. And over the long term, this can be quite unsustainable. So if this is you, the, there are a couple of things that you could try. Firstly, uh, a simple budget plan. So writing down last month's spends and finding patterns of where you spent money. Then have a think about why you spent that money. You know, was it, uh, did you feel peer pressured to spend? Are you sort of picking up financial habits of where you regularly spend on certain things do you spend when you're in a certain mood there may be loads of different reasons why you spend money on certain things but just have a think about your spending habits and why you're spending the money on the things that you do you can then look at some high spend areas to highlight and cut out and find cheaper alternatives where you can so for example if you regularly buy takeaway food or takeaway coffees on your lunch break uh, if you're also going out and buying lunch every day while you're at work, there's cheaper alternatives that you can um, do there, such as making your own lunch, bringing in a flask of coffee in the morning, that's going to be cheaper and over the long term is going to save you quite a lot of money as well. You could also try and delay your spending. So if you think that there's something that you might want to buy, waiting a few days just to make sure that you're certain uh, that you want it or that you need it, a lot of the time you'll actually think, hmm, I don't really need to, to, to make that purchase. And in that case, rather than impulse buying things, you can actually, you know, decide that you don't need it, save that money, put it towards the future or for something else that you might need. And then finally, just consider your use of credit. So are you spending a lot of money on high interest repayments? Uh, could you consolidate some credit potentially at a lower APR to save some money? Just have a look at your level of credit, uh, how you're using it, and if there's any better ways of managing that money as well. Because if you're committed to uh, high interest rate payments every month, that's obviously meaning that you've got less money to, to use in that month or to save for the future. So understanding your spending habits and making small changes in the short term can actually lead to big improvements in the long term. And if you need a little bit more help with this, check out our previous episode on uh, a simple way to get started with budgeting and a simple way to manage your money throughout the month as well. So that is it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, hopefully this has sparked some thoughts about your own money habits and some things to think about 
in terms of how you use your money uh, and ways that you could maybe um, be a little bit smarter with the way that you spend to give yourself more options for the future. Now, if you found this useful, please subscribe or follow the podcast to never miss an episode. And we'll see you in our next episode um, sometime soon. Take care. Have a great day.